What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a bioactive terrarium for some of the coolest isopods. I'm using this awesome windowsill planter made from recycled materials that I got from Etsy seller sold a glass by Brian. I'll leave a link to his page in the description if you'd like one for yourself. First I add a 1-2cm to two centimeter layer of motor clay across the bottom of the terrarium. This creates an air pocket and will also provide a small amount of drainage. It's not essential to add one to a terrarium of this size though. Next I'm adding some sphagnum moss on top of the molar clay. This is a high quality moss that was harvested from Scotland. It was given to me by my friends from Moss Clerks and it will help with water retention in the substrate. Plant cuttings love rooting into sphagnum because it's water retentive and airy. Check out the colours. It has patches of white, green and even a deep red throughout the moss which is really cool. Substrate time. Add a healthy amount into the container but keep it low at the front. This means more surface area is visible from the front view which will improve the overall aesthetic. My favourite plant cuttings and mosses will be planted here. Using some filtered water I spray the substrate until it's just damp. Of course there are no drainage holes in the terrarium so take care with this step. Cork bark is one of my favourite materials to use because it's naturally mould resistant and holds up well in the humidity of a terrarium. The isopods will enjoy hiding in and under it too and on top of that it will provide a nice background for the terrarium. I had this lemon button fern division from another build and I thought it would look nice planted behind the bark. As new fronds emerge they'll cascade over the bark providing a level of interest. Of course, this terrarium needs moss, and the first kind that I'm using is this unknown tropical species I got a while back. It's not fussy and does well wherever it's used. As I picked it up, a small Selaginella cutting came out with it, so I'll use that in here too. Selaginella uncinata is a great terrarium plant, if a little fast growing. A few days ago, I visited Mo from the Botanical Archive, and he gave me a whole load of cool rare plant cuttings. This is a tiny fern that he said he didn't have much luck with, so I'm keen to see if the isopods will refrain from eating it, and if they do, how well it will grow in this terrarium. I think it looks nice here next to our unknown moss. I've experimented with Java moss a lot over the past few years, and I found that it loves growing on the bonsai soil at Akadama. A thin layer spread across the front of the terrarium will provide a great surface for it to thrive on. You don't have to use Akadama, but try to add something in between the moss and the soil. Java moss is easy to grow and propagate, making it one of my favourite mosses to use. Simply take your piece of moss, cut it into small pieces like you're adding coriander to a curry, and spread it across the Akadama. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, then you'll be familiar with this plant. It's a dog violet and they grow everywhere in the UK. I found it's a reliable terrarium plant that also flowers. It has smallish leaves and works well in terrariums of all sizes. In it goes next to our tiny fern and unknown moss. I feel that I almost overused this Nephrolepis fern, but if it works, then why change it? They divide easily into multiple plants and occupy a lot of that empty space in the terrarium. Next up is this Tradescantia. It takes to cuttings easily and looks pretty when lots of cuttings are planted close to each other. It's as easy as pushing each one into the substrate until the first set of leaves comes into contact with the soil. Within a few weeks the plants will have rooted. I have a near 100% success rate with these plant cuttings in the terrarium. My friend John collects rare plants from South America and often gives me some cuttings. Here I'm using Peperomia kidney leaf, Peperomia jamesoniana and Pilea repens. The Pilea has a beautiful dark colour to its leaf and I'll take more cuttings as it grows larger. The jamesoniana has a vining habit that I hope will occupy much of the background and the Peperomia kidney leaf is one of the nicest Peperomias that I've ever seen. I'm curious though, if you have a favourite plant that you use in your terrariums let me know in the comment section. Now it's time for the isopods. I'm using two species today. The Dwarf White, which is a great cleanup crew member, and Armadillo Diam Klugii Dubrovnik, an easy species to keep and one that will multiply fairly quickly in ideal conditions. They're easier to capture on camera than Cubaris Marina because they're a little slower and seem to amble around rather than dash. I love the white spots on their back. These are a great beginner isopod for your terrarium.
If I post a TikTok or Instagram reel, people always ask about the powder and here's the explanation. Isopods need protein and calcium so their exoskeletons can stay strong. I use fish food and a little cuttlefish bone and they absolutely love it. Only a small amount is needed though. I also feed them with veg scraps like cucumber, melon rind, squash, apple and other fruits and veggies with a high water content. The last step is adding some leaf litter. I usually add the lion's share at the back so it doesn't ruin how the terrarium looks and you'll probably notice that the isopods spend most of their time here. It replicates their natural forest floor environment and the leaves slowly break down over time providing them with a food source. Leaf litter is a great addition to your bioactive terrariums and I highly recommend that you use more of it. I give the whole terrarium a light spray and it's pretty much finished. I should point out that this container has a decent size opening near the top which allows for a healthy airflow. Isopods need good airflow so they don't suffocate and it's really important that you don't use them in fully sealed containers. So there you have it. That's my windowsill box isopod terrarium. If you make any then tag me on Instagram as I'd love to see them. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.